Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is Task Scheduler and it is a medium level problem. So this particular problem says that we have been given some tasks, right? And each of the tasks is represented by an alphabet. So from A to Z, right? Now uh, we can do a task in one unit of time. The only thing is that whenever a task is completed, you need to wait at least k units of time before doing that task again, right? So it's it's just for the same task again. You can do two different tasks consecutively, no problem. But whenever you want to repeat the same task, you have to wait at least k units of time. So waiting at least k units means, for example, in this case, k is equal to two. So you will have to wait here and wait here, and only after the second unit of time has been completed. Right during the third unit of time, you can repeat a task again. Right now we have to find the least number of units of time that the uh, like CPU will take to finish the task. Basically, we'll have to find the minimum time. So let me just uh, take this particular sample test case. So we have it right here, and what we essentially have to do is these are the tasks that we have. Right. So these are the tasks that we have with ourselves. Now uh, you will see that uh, you, as given in the sample example, you can put on A and you can put on B. Then your CPU has to be idle, and then you can put on A again. So why is it so? Because the value of K here is two, right? So you like uh, used A here, then you cannot use A here again and A here again, and only after these two units of time have been completed, you can use A here again as well. So there is one thing very obvious, and that is, for example, if the value of k is some non-zero value, right? So there has to be some other element in between two a's, right? So it is always optimal to try not to assign similar characters consecutively, right? There should be the rule for every value of k which is greater than zero, right? I would always want to avoid this particular state. So if if I have two elements a b a, I would always want to write them like this. Now the next question that comes to my mind is whether the frequency of these characters is important or not. Yes, it is very well important. For example, in this case, it was A B A. If the frequency of A and B are like this, A is one and B is two, so it should be B A B. Right. This is the only way I can separate two Bs. Right. Obviously, if the value of K is zero, then it's no problem. I can write B B together. But if the value of K is some non-zero value, I would always want to separate the values of B. Right. So one thing is very obvious. For example, if I have uh, a character with some frequency f, right, and let's say this is the maximum frequency in my whole array, so uh, I will place that particular character. Let's say this character is x for now, right? I have this character. Now I have some k other characters in between. Now I have the character x again. Now I have the character some other k characters in between. Again the x character, and again some k other characters in between, right? So let's say the value of f was four here, right? So one, two, three, and four. So this is the configuration, or this is the minimum space that will be taken by the character x, because you need to have at least k elements between two x's, right? So this is the minimum configuration. Now what about the remaining characters? So let's say I have some other character a here, right? I can easily put a here and the second a here, and if there are more a's. I can put them here, right? So at max, a also can have a frequency of four. So I can put the last a here. It can never have the frequency greater than four because we already discussed that. Let x be the character with the maximum frequency. So this was our first assumption, right? So let me just write it also. So we are assuming our assumption is our assumption the maximum frequency. In the array is four, or let's say f of the. So let me just reframe the statement. X is the character with the maximum frequency in the array, and that that is equal to f, right? So this is our assumption, first assumption, and on the basis of this, we are saying. That any other character a can be always placed in between these x characters, and at max it will also have a frequency of a, so we can always place it after x, right? So all the other characters can be easily placed between these characters, right? Now the thing is, 
how do we actually find this particular value you will always observe that how many times am i repeating k so i am repeating k f minus 1 times so if the value of frequency maximum frequency was 4 so i am repeating k f minus 1 times f minus 1 times right now what is the other value that has to be added to my answer that is the value of f itself right because i am repeating x 4 times right so let's say it is f now what is the other value that i have to add the other value is the remaining number of characters that i have with the same frequency as the character x right so as i discussed other any other character like a can also have a frequency of 4 right at maximum it can have a frequency of 4 so let's say these are the other characters right so this would be our final answer so first of all we counted these particular places in between right which is equals to k into f minus 1 where f is a fre maximum frequency in the array right now i add these values x at x themselves right which is equals to f and there might be other characters with the same frequency as f or the maximum frequency and i can add it later on so this is one case let us let me write it as case number one this would always work when the k value of k is very sparse right you have like a lot of space between two characters but when the value of k is very small k is very small right so let's say you had your first character here second character here third character here and fourth character here let's say this is some k this is some k and this is some k so there might be a case when you can not fit all the remaining values in between so the total number of values are n we have used uh, this these number of spaces k into f minus 1 right and i have used f plus i have used other right so these are the number of places i have taken so if i subtract it my this value can still be non zero when the value of k is too small right because all the remaining characters cannot fit in between these places so what do i do in that particular case you will observe in that case the answer can always be equal to the total number of characters so let me just give you an example for this so for example i have a a a b b b and c c c and the value of k is 1 right so what i essentially tried to do was i tried to place a and i need to have one space in between then i have tried to place a again and i need to have one space in between and i tried to place a again right so this was my initial idea in case number one but this would definitely not work here right because of obvious constraints that i can only place one character b b and let's say b another b was placed here then i'll have to place c together right and that is not a value viable idea so when the value of k is very small right the op most optimal answer will always be equals to n itself right so you will see i can write abc then abc and abc so you will observe if you write a couple of more cases like these you will observe that whenever the value of k is small the most optimal answer can be n itself right and when the value is k is small then this case is going to give you a wrong answer similar to what i explained here if I try to apply the same formula here, that would give me the answer 2 plus 3 plus 2, right. So this is obviously not the correct answer. This will give me 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. However, the actual answer should be 9. That is the number of characters. So you can just uh, write a maximum conditions. Either this case will be true or this case will be true. Not like both of them will never be true together. So you can just directly write your condition as maximum of n comma this particular case right so let's say answer right so this will be your final answer i've given an example of uh, when this particular case of n will work and this will only work when k, where the value of k is very small and both of the conditions the case one that we have discussed and the case two that we have discussed right now will never exist together so you can always output your answer as maximum of these two values so let me just show you the code for this particular problem now i've created a vector of size 26 right and uh, I just traverse through the tasks and I increment the frequency of each of the characters. Now I initialize my max and count variables. So if my maximum frequency is equal to my current elements frequency, I increment my count value. And if it is greater, I like set my maximum as f of i and count as 1. Now I initialize my answer as so maximum of n sub comma some other value. So n is the second case and this is the first case. So what are we actually doing? I am adding those k positions which is equal to k into max minus 1, right? And I'm adding the last 
uh, max elements itself and there will be some elements remaining so i am just adding them as count minus 1 so why count minus 1 i counted the total number of elements which had the same frequency same maximum frequency one of them would be the element x that i have considered so the other remaining elements would be count minus 1 now i can just safely return my answer and uh, let me submit this code and show you that this works so i got a couple of wrong submissions because of one typing mistake and uh, i wrote 24 here instead of 26 so that, that is something i made wrong and uh, you see that it passes all the test cases and i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems so i see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet in case you are one of them then definitely consider subscribing it's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later so till the next video drops keep sharing this channel with your friends keep coding stay safe bye bye